a lot of people want to make a doodle it, but they don't know how to actually make the doodle it. So I'm going to go through the basic steps of how to do this. I've already gone ahead and cut and hooped my stabilizer. And again, I'm using the poly mesh stabilizer. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and put your fabric on here and hoop it when you hoop your stabilizer. I didn't. Um, and I am going to go ahead and secure my fabric to the stabilizer with a little bit of basting spray. A lot of people are really opposed to basting spray and they will choose to pin or to tape their fabric to their hoop. And that's okay. It's either way will work. Um, if you use too much basting spray, you can create a serious problem with your machine. Um, when you put this on here, you're just, you're not going to be spray painting anything. You're just putting enough on there just to hold it in place a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put my fabric on and smooth it out. I didn't put any of the batting underneath this just for this demonstration, but if you were going to put the batting underneath, um, and I think that it makes it a little smoother when you color, you would put that down, then put your fabric on top of that, and then run your steps in your machine. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on the machine and show you the next step. Okay, so I've put this on the machine and I have run steps one and two of this. Step one is going to do this outline and step two is going to do the actual design. The choice of when to run step one, you can either run it directly on your stabilizer before you put your fabric on or you can and use it as a placement or you can put your fabric on and then you can run it as kind of a tack down stitch to keep your fabric from shifting. On some designs, I don't like doing the placement stitch because when it comes back and it stitches again, sometimes those outlines can be a little off just because fabric shifts a little during the stitching. On this, because of the way that these doodlets are done, it isn't going to be a problem because when the final stitch runs, it's going to run just inside of this line. And that allows you to be able to run step one as a placement step and then run step three, which sews on your back, without worrying about the lines being off and having kind of these lines showing when you turn your design. When I put on the back, I'm going to put it on here like this. I like to make sure I put it on there and trim it so that I can tape it. So if it's a little big, which this is, I'm going to trim that off a little. And that way I've got room to put my tape on there. I could use pins. I typically don't. And I'm just going to use some scotch tape. On a design that I know is going to pretty much fill the entire hoop, I don't really think it's necessary to have a placement mark because I'm pretty certain that it's, you know, I'm not going to need that. I know where it's going to go. I'm going to make sure my fabric is just covering the entire stitch area. And you'll see that in some of the directions that I do. It says cover your stitch area. This design happens to be because it's wide, it's not quite as long. So you are going to lose a little bit of fabric. And if you're concerned about that, you can definitely run step one and then you can put your fabric on. And if you wanted to have a tack down and a placement, you can just back your machine up and run step one again after you've put your fabric on. I'm going to go ahead and run step three to sew the back on and I will be back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've run step three, and this is my design. Now I'm going to take this out of the hoop.
if you were using a fabric that was printed for the back of your design, you would want to make sure that you put that with the, the pretty side face down because this is actually going to be the inside of the back of your design. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. And I'm not doing a super fabulous job because it's pretty late at night and I'm trying to get this done. So y'all just bear with me a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about basing spray again while I'm cutting this out. You want to make sure that you're using a basing spray and you are not using um, an adhesive spray. Basing spray and adhesive spray are not the same thing. And if you use adhesive spray, you're going to be in big, big trouble. That stuff will get onto your needle. It's going to get into your machine. It's going to make your thread sticky. It's going to be awful. If you use too much basting spray, the same thing will happen. It can gum up your needle and it can be really ugly. I like to use either this brand, it's the Spray and Bond, or I like to use a product called 505. Um, it's a little pricier than the Spray and Bond, but it works just as well. Um, I actually used to only use 505 because it has supposedly a chemical in it that keeps it from gumming up your machine. And you will find that it is, it's just barely tacky. And it is not tacky for very long. After it dries, it kind of ceases to be tacky. When you are putting the back piece on your designs, you saw that I used tape. Um, and like I said, you can use pins. Do not ever, ever use basting spray when you're making a doodle it to put the back piece on your doodle it because when you go to turn that you will have stuck the back piece to the front piece and you cannot turn it right side out now i have trimmed this to size and you will see that it leaves a gap here and this is to turn your doodle it i have a lot of people want to know what's the best way to turn my doodle it's i like hemostats I have this really long pair in case I have something that's obviously really long. I have a shorter pair that I use if it's kind of something smaller. Um, I got this pair at Joanne in the quilting section and they actually call them needle pullers. I guess you could if you wanted to. And they do in fact work to pull needles if you're if you get one stuck. But I I actually ordered these online and I love them. And they have a nice kind of a blunt tip on here. And I'm not the world's greatest turner, but I this is how I turn mine. I'm sure if you guys have a better way of turning your designs, send me a message and let me know. I know some people have said, well, if you turn all of your corners first, then your corners are nicer. And that... That is true. If I'm doing something square, I actually do that. But I get most of it kind of right side out like that. And another thing that I like with these hemostats and their little blunt tip is that you can put them back into the hole and use them to smooth this out. And it kind of gets all in there. If there's a corner or a point, you can kind of put it in there and work that out. And you want to make sure that you try to get all of the edges that you can turned. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Don't think, oh, well, I didn't really poke that out very much. And when I stuff it, it's magically going to come out and be amazing. Because that's probably not going to be the case. I'm going to check on this and see which way I'm going to do this. Okay, it's not very, It's not very deep, so it's going to go ahead and turn for me. kind of awkward trying to do this and sort of hold it out for myself but all right so that is what your doodle it looks like when you turn it 
then you're going to stuff this thing and stuff it until it's nice and taut. Don't just kind of stuff it where it's kind of like, eh, like he's half dead. You don't want to do that. I'm going to stuff mine and then I'll be back to show you what it looks like and also how I close my doodlets. Okay, we're back and this doodlet has been stuffed and I tried to stuff it and get most of the larger wrinkles out. There are times when if you have an inside curve like this, you might want to make little clips in, in your seam allowance before you turn it and that might help ease that. Um, sometimes if you have big wrinkles, it's just because you didn't stuff it enough. Um, and he's pretty taut um, all over. I also should have mentioned before that I use my hemostats to stuff my doodlets sometimes because I find that it's easier to do that. I just kind of pull some off, I get a hold of it and just jam it all the way if it's on a far corner or something. Or even if he, you know, has a little bit of a wrinkle and I need to do like some doodlet Botox, you can kind of go up there and just kind of place that exactly where you need it and kind of help smooth out wrinkles and things like that. When I stitch mine closed, and I will admit that I am terrible at this. Um, I know how to do it. It just never really looks as great, probably because I don't have enough patience with it. Um, it never looks as great as what some people can do. I try to use the ladder stitch and I saw this little trick the other day. I've, I've been tying knots in my needles the wrong way the whole time. If you will take your thread and your needle and you put it around there and you go around two times and hold that needle and pull the thread all the way to the end. It will make a knot in your thread and it always makes it right here at the end. I'm baffled. This just amuses me to no end. But this is called a quilter's knot and I just think it's so cool and I thought I would show you guys that. When I close my doodlets, I stuff them until there is stuffing coming out and even after I get them mostly closed, I may put a little bit more stuffing in there just to make sure that I have that curve rounded out. I try not to put turn holes on curved parts just because I think it's a little harder to line up, but sometimes there's no way around it and it just kind of has to be done. Also, I stitched everything in black, but if you wanted to, when you do your placement and your final stitching, if you did that in white, you wouldn't see the stitching quite as much. I, I really wasn't super concerned about that for this video, but um, if you wanted to do that, you certainly could. I'm going to start down here. And, and I'm sure that I'll get some of you guys to write in and say, that's not the right way to do that, and that is okay. Please let me know how you do it because I really hate, I hate making doodlets because I don't like to close the holes. Um, like I said, I'm kind of lazy that way. All right. So you get them started. And what you're going to do is there's not a line on the back like there is the front. This is where you're you're shooting to close just on this side of this so that you hide your placement stitches. Now there's unfortunately not one on the back so you just kind of have to imagine where that would be. And you're going to go in like this and pull that through. And you're going to go directly across and you're going to go in and out like this. And you're going to pull that. 
And you're going to do that all the way until you get to the end. If you make really, really long stitches with this, it's going to be uglier than it will be if you will take your time and make kind of a smaller stitch. That's where I usually have horrible downfalls because I get impatient and I just want to hurry up and do it. And then I have kind of a nasty looking spot where I closed my doodle it. But I'm going to go ahead and sew this guy up and I'll be back one more time and show you what it looks like completely finished. Okay, here I am kind of at the end of sewing up my doodle it and I realized something that I probably should have told you. When you're sewing this shut, you want to make sure that the raw edges of your fabric flip to the inside when you do this. Um, otherwise, you're going to have some fuzziness going on in your seam and you don't, you don't want that. So, um, when you're doing this, if it seems like they're not turning in exactly right, you can take some scissors very carefully and kind of poke them in so that you get all of the raw edges of the seam in there and then finish sewing this up. Um, another thing that you can do if you find that your stitches seem like they're kind of pulling loose because it's stuffed tight, you can kind of squeeze this seam a little bit and pull on the thread a little bit and that will help tighten the, those stitches so that they're not loose because if they're loose they're going to look very, um, well, they're not going to look good. It's going to leave it really gappy and you'll kind of have like a more puckered seam. There are people who can slip stitch things closed and you can never tell where that seam was. I am not one of those people. Um, I try, but it's just not a gift that I have. So... All right, this is pretty good. When you tie off your doodle it, I usually kind of try to slip my thread in there. Oops. And just a regular knot. And you're going to want to, to hide this knot, put your needle, after you've tied your knot, but before you trim, go into the seam and come out. It doesn't matter where you come out. And you're going to want to pull this thread out and kind of pull a little bit and snip it off. And the end of that thread will completely disappear. And you will never know what the edge of it is. Now, like I said, I regrettably am not very good at this, and I tried to hustle through it too, and that didn't help. But that's okay, I would guess. It's not really super great. I have seen worse on commercially produced items, but, um, but that is how you do a doodle it. You make sure that it's trimmed well, make sure that you trim inside seams if you need to, Make sure that you stuff it until it's nice and full because you don't want it to look like it's been around for 30 years and, and it's just kind of losing all of its fluff. That's not good. So that is how your finished doodle it should look.